Hello, I'm Sharon Hall, one of your East Central Ontario Regional Council staff members. I work with the Formation, Nurture and Justice team of the Regional Council. This team has working groups focusing on the following areas of outreach. Indigenous justice and right relations, a place at the table, rural ministry, children, youth and young adults, care of creation, interfaith intercultural relations, anti-racism, working together to pose violence against women and children. I'm very pleased to introduce you to the members of the Anti-Racism Working Group. This group has recently formed, but they are already doing great work. Anti-racism is so important, especially in Canada, where we don't think it's a problem here. We each need to do our part to become an anti-racist regional council. I am Reverend Dr. Aruna Alexander. I'm pleased to be facilitating our subgroup on anti-racism in church and society. I'm Lionel Ketela, the minister at Claremont United Church and at Goodwood United Church. And for me, one of the biggest reasons why I think our church and our denomination, our region need to be involved in anti-racism work is rooted in the prophetic tradition that we see being lived out by the prophets in the scriptures. For example, the prophet Amos had this vision given to him by God, and he said, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. And I think we see that image of justice as being central to Jesus' ministry as well. And I think if we want to follow in Jesus' radical footsteps, walking in the path of justice is the way to follow Jesus. And personally, what inspires me, what motivates me to be involved in the anti-racism work of our region uh, comes from my own experiences. For many years, I worked uh, in the area and advocated for queer inclusion, for full inclusion in another Christian denomination. And through that often very difficult work, I experienced incredible amounts of love and support and solidarity from other people. And so for me, I think this is my time to pay it forward. I believe that the gospel frees us so we can be there for our neighbor. And so I want other people to experience the same kind of love and solidarity and support that I experienced in my own justice struggles in the church. And so that's my own inspiration for lending my time and energies to anti-racism work in our region, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Marilyn Zare, Minister Serving the Maynooth, Madawaska Pastoral Charge. I think our work together on anti-racism is important for the church and our region because the work of anti-racism is part of the gospel or good news. Jesus, the one we follow, came to announce the good news of God's dream for the world where the oppressed are freed, the blind will see, and the poor have good news preached to them. Racism is a form of oppression, and only when the blind see and act will that oppression cease to exist. As has often been said, none are free until all are free to live fully without discrimination. When we are blind to our participation in discrimination, we can't do what we need to do to end it in ourselves, in our churches, and in our local communities. The second question I was asked to respond to is what calls forth my vision and commitment to promoting an anti-racist church and society. As I said in answer to the first question, my vision is founded on Christ's vision of good news and by extension on the Pentecost vision of the church where everyone hears that good news in their own language so that the community that forms to follow Jesus is extended to people of every ethnicity and culture who then go on to live in mutual support and harmony with each other. Diversity and inclusion of difference are fundamental to the good news as it comes to us in the Bible. And there is new urgency to work towards this vision because it's no longer possible to deny that racism exists systemically and in our midst in the church. 
Video images and stories of the horrific treatment of people of color have reached our eyes and our ears. And my prayer is that the blind will truly see, the oppressed will truly be free, and that we can proclaim with Jesus that this is the year of God's favor. I'm Bruce Laird, the chair of the council at uh, New Hope United Church in Port Hope. I'm going to try to answer a couple of questions. Uh, one is, why is this important for the church? Uh, the the uh, existence of racism and uh, anti-racism stems, seems to be uh, reaching the conscious mind of the middle class Canadian and American. The United Church could play a role in influencing changes in society, society's view of racism and anti-racism. The question is, what could that role be? There is systematic racism in Canada. It does exist on a more subtle level than in the United States, which probably has over 30% of its population with overt racist tendencies. Our legal system does provide considerable protection against racist conduct. The problem is the application of the law by law enforcement, the courts, governments, and other institutions. I say that as a former lawyer and person with a lifetime of activity in politics. We have reached the tipping point in anti-racist activity, and hopefully the change will be for the better. I do see some, some risks and some dangers, but I'm involved in this process because I think that something can be achieved at this time. Hello, I'm Megan King. Although I've lived in Canada all my adult life, I was born in the 50s and grew up on the south shore of Long Island, about 60 miles east of New York City. Growing up in the States, I was aware from a very early age that racism was an entity of evil that permeated even the lily-white suburbs where my family lived. Casual jokes about African Americans and other people of color, jokes about other ethnicities and religions, were an integral part of my childhood. I was fortunate that in my family, this sort of denigration was never tolerated. And although it often put us on the outs with neighborhood kids, my siblings and I learned from an early age that racism was a constant and honorable duty to fight. I moved to Canada in 1973 and found things very different here. It wasn't until I'd been here some years that I realized that what I took to be a very racially tolerant society was simply a society that was much more adept at hiding its racism. Perhaps that made it much more insidious. Two years ago, I joined the formation, nurture and justice team of our East Central Ontario Regional Council and through them, the anti-racism task group. Becoming more aware of racial issues, items named in response to the truth and reconciliation hearings, issues of systemic race and racism against African Canadians and other peoples of color as well as our First Nations brothers and sisters, fuel my desire to be part of a systemic change. There's truth to the saying that we grow and thrive in diversity in families and neighborhoods and in our wider world. Diversity encourages growth, and growth encourages the love of God that is part of my understanding of our world. My hope and my prayer are that in doing this difficult work, I may come to understand better who I am and whose I am, and how I can help others do the same. For our closing session, I have some great news to share with you. Since our first meeting on August the 4th, there are 12 groups that have formed or are in the process of forming to study the topic of racism in church and society. Reverend Dr. Jackie Hopper, Cressy Glenora United Church, is leading a study on white fragility. 
lay leader Janet Cavisto at Trinity St. Andrews, Brighton. Reverend Marilyn Zier at the Maynooth Madawaska Pastoral Charge is working with the municipality there. Reverend Megan King is also leading a study on white fragility at Walkworth United Church. Reverend Sue Genge, Kingsview United Church. Dr. Sloan Coffin at Trinity United Church and Grace United Church, Napanee. Lawyer Bruce Laird is forming a group at Welcome United Church, Port Hope. Lay leader Marilyn Rogers is looking forward to forming a group in Kingston. Reverend Lionel Catola is leading a study at Claremont United Church and Greenwood United Church. Reverend Kathy Russell will be forming a group at Bloomfield United Church. And I am pleased to inform you that retired clergy group in Belleville has decided to conduct a study on the book, White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. We are very pleased and very excited about the response and we wish all study groups a great learning experience. Mm -hmm.